What is up y'all? My name is Rhino Spartan and the Automatons update for Space Engineers released last month, adding a plethora of new blocks of both the decorative and, of course, the automated variety. While all these blocks are excellent additions to the game, one became my favorite as soon as I heard it was going to be added. That block is the Event Controller. At less of a PCU cost than your living room couch, this new block allows for the creation of automated systems that activate if a certain condition or conditions are met. For example, if this red door was to be opened, the event controller will detect that occurrence and activate this light block. One happening I discovered that the event controller can notice is a change in thruster power. I have set up an event connection where when this atmospheric thruster uses 50% of its potential power or more, this door will open. Now you're probably considering what the implications of this could possibly be. Well. <laughs> Since a change in thrust power can prompt another block or blocks to also change, this concept can be applied to the clang drive. Have mercy. Please, please. There is no mercy. By connecting a thruster to an event controller and the event controller to a clang drive, the clang drive can work with the thrusters of ships more effectively. Essentially, a clang drive can behave as a thruster controlled by the W, A, S, D, space, and C keys on a keyboard and the left stick and the buttons on a controller. This movement system is slightly complex to construct for your ships. Because of this, I will provide a guide on how to set it up. First, you add two event controllers, one or more clang drives depending on how large your ship is, and thrusters for the environment your ship will reside in. Now you are going to select a forward thruster and rename it to, to something you can easily find. This can be done from a control seat or cockpit. Then you open the first event controller settings and choose the event thrust percentage. To ensure that the clang drive only activates when the forward thrusters are exerting a large amount of power, Set the condition to equal or greater than, and the threshold to 50%. Next, you can choose your forward thruster. If you are looking to stay in atmosphere, you can use atmospheric thrusters and hydrogen thrusters. If you wish to remain in zero gravity locations, you can use ion and hydrogen thrusters. For interplanetary expeditions, only hydrogen thrusters will work consistently. After setting the conditions, you can now select the action. Click the Select Action button to open up the toolbar menu. In either the All Blocks or Groups category, you're going to want to select the block that activates the clang drive, which is usually a piston or a hangar door, and choose the option that starts the drive. To set up the deactivation, you open the menu of the second event controller. Just like with the other event controller, you are going to set the event to thrust percentage. The condition, however, is going to be set to equal or less than, and the threshold is going to be set to 49.5%. Next, you select the forward thruster again and add it to the selected blocks list. Now you click the Select Action button to open the toolbar menu and choose the block that deactivates the drive. By doing this, 
When the forward thruster uses 50% of its potential power or more, the drive will activate. As soon as that percentage hits 49.5% or lower, the drive will be turned off. This ensures that the drive will only start when a greater amount of thrust is desired. If you all have any questions or suggestions concerning this mechanism, please leave a comment down below. Y'all's feedback is very much appreciated. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye. Do not worry. I have other uses for you. <laughs>